Dragon Quest is a multi-million dollar franchise encompassing video games, light novels, mangas and animes. What started as a simple JRPG made for the Famicom has grown to the point of becoming a powerhouse in the industry and a staple of RPGs and fantasy in general. I mean, just ask anyone the first thing they think when you say the word slime, and it will basically be a toy cost between these two. But honestly, the iconic blue droplet slime with a big smile and eyes is the textbook definition of a slime. So it is no lie to say that Dragon Quest has revolutionized the industry as we know it, and that is not only in the video game sphere, but also in the manga and anime industry. So it is no surprise to hear that a long time ago in the year 1992, an anime by the name of Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai gained notoriety and achieved a kind of legendary status as a beloved anime by anyone who watched it. Let me just get this out before we move on. I haven't watched the original 1992 anime, but instead I watched the 2020 remake. But first, let's go through some of the backgrounds of The Adventure of Dai. In 1989, with the hype of all the video games, it was decided that the next obvious step to increase its popularity was to reach at a different audience through manga. And so, in 1989, Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai started serializing in weekly Shonen Jump, and to the surprise of no one, it became one of the best-selling manga series of all time, with over 47 million copies sold. And it was during that incredible reception of the manga that an anime was greenlit. That is the 1991 adaptation of the story, which ran from 46 episodes until September of 1992. There is just one single problem with this. The original manga finished a realization in 1996, so obviously it was impossible to depict the proper ending of the story in the original anime. And as I said, I haven't watched the original series, but from what I heard, the story ends at around the middle point of the manga and they don't even get to meet the Demon Lord Barn. So, in 2020, Toei Animation took it upon themselves to deliver a full adaptation of the original manga with a total of 100 episodes. Now that we know the background, let's talk about what is this anime about. The story follows Dai, a young boy that was found in a small boat by monsters that are living peacefully in an island after the demon king Hadler was defeated by the hero Avan. He grows with them and makes himself friend with a golden flying slime. During his time in the island, Dai meets some fake heroes as well as the princess Leona. Later on, he is visited by the hero Avan with his apprentice Pop, a cowardly and pessimistic magician. Avan decides to train Dai as his apprentice, but quickly, things turn to worse when Hadler appears out of nowhere, resurrected by the Demon Lord Barn and becoming his subordinate. After a fierce battle, a band sacrifices himself to defeat Hadler and save Dai and Pop. Unfortunately, Hadler survives and it is set on defeating all remnants of Avan apprentices to ensure Barn supremacy in the world. And that is only the first five episodes. Later on, Dai has to fight against the six generals of Barn, as well as some other enemies that appear later on in the story. Befriending a few of them, defeating others, Dai also learns about his past, as well as the truth of who his parents are and what is that blue crest that appears on his body sometimes. And at the end, Dai fights him to defeat the demon lord Barn and save the world. Now let's talk about this story in a broader aspect. First, the pacing. For a 100 episode anime, you would think that the story was stretched out or that it was full of fillers, but mostly the story stays true to the original manga. And while yes, there are some slow episodes that don't really bring too much into the story, and some of the fights are a little bit stretched, overall the anime encompasses all the different fights and stories into a compacted story where almost all the time there is something new and interesting. Keep in mind that they fight the six generals, some of them multiple times. They also fight Hadler's royal guard again multiple times. Kill Barn and Mr. Vern, and of course, Dai's final battle against Barn. And all of that into a hundred episode. It feels like the perfect amount to me. As for the character's development and story. 
I do have to say that this story is more on the tamer side compared to more adult animations that we have seen usually get for this type of fantasy animes. Yes, there are a few exceptions, like the moment Dai thinks that there is no way to save humanity anymore and it is completely lost. But overall, the story tends to be more focused on the power of friendship and how if we work together, we can defeat anyone. Most of the characters fall into this trope, with maybe the exception of Hunkel and Hadler, who in my opinion were by far the best characters of the story. Hunkel comes as a contrast to Dai. He is also a boy that was raised by monsters but holds a grudge on Naban, as he believes that he killed his adopted monster father. Trained by both Aban in sword arts and Mr. Varn in magic, he was a powerful villain turned friend after the truth of his father's death is revealed. True to the story, he is the lone wolf that he believes it's his duty to defeat Hadler and the other generals, but grows closer to Dai and his group. Hadler, on the other hand, he comes out as an individual that would do anything, even cheat or do whatever necessary just to win, that at the beginning kind of looks petty. But later on, we see how his conviction of trying to do anything possible just to defeat his nemesis makes him a really great character, especially in the later parts where he goes even against Barn just to fight against Dai. And at the end, he even becomes kind of a friend to Dai or a helper at some points. As for the romance in the story, on Dai's side, there is really not much to say. He is still a kid, but it's implied that there could be a romantic relationship with the princess. On the other hand, there is the love triangle between Mam, who is another disciple of Aban, Pop and Hunkel, that really felt unnecessary. Hunkel was just a cool guy who didn't care about anything, but Mam phoning over him and Pop getting jealous all the time was kind of annoying. Especially when at the end of the story, there was one other girl in love with him, but he just tosses her because she loves Mam. And there is not even a conclusion to this. We never know if any one of them ends up together. And at that point, I would have been better just to not have any romance at all. For the fight scenes, I have to say that at the beginning, they felt a bit lacking. It felt like they were just making them just so that they could keep moving the plot forward. But after the fight between Dai and Baran, most of the fights were really high quality. Especially between Barn and Baran and the last fight of the series. Yes, it was not Jujutsu Kaisen, but it was still better than the generic fight scenes that we usually get. In general, I loved the story. It felt really like a good old fantasy hero story of all time, in which the hero slowly overcomes his weakness to save the day. You can see that the story was intended for a younger audience, but still, people from all ages will probably enjoy it. But of course, there are a few bad points in the story. First is the power leveling. The villain of the story felt like an invincible monster that had lived for hundreds of years and was basically immortal. But of course, with just a bit of training, our heroes were able to defeat him. And when everything seemed lost, our hero finds the power within him to defeat the antagonist. This felt like the animated version of that meme of the main villain versus the power of friendship. And the last thing, and before I say anything, this is a spoiler for the ending, so take that in consideration. Okay, so I have to say that I felt the ending was a bit lacking. Yes, the final fight between Barn and Dai was great, and Dai sacrificing himself to save everyone felt like a coming full circle to what Avan had done. But then, they say something about him still being alive somewhere and Pop and Mam going out to search for him. Why couldn't you just let him die? That was the perfect ending, but you have to give some hope for our hero, because of course. As I said, this anime was catered for a younger audience, so it's understandable that they want to give some hope. In general, I would recommend this anime for younger people that want to get a bit into the world of anime, or maybe Dragon Quest lovers that want a newer story. It has good fight scenes, great pacing, and an array of characters where you can find your favorite in no time. It is truly one of the greatest stories from the Dragon Quest world. And with that, we come to the conclusion of this anime review. What did you guys thought of Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai? Let me know in the comments below. Until then, see you guys next time.
しても」